Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the next basic concept in D3.js. It's called data binding. It is how D3 binds data points uh, from uh, the raw data set to the visual elements in the web browser. Um, let's first, we need to create a data set to, uh, for this example. I'm going to continue to use the uh, previous tutorial example of uh, three circle red blue and green uh, for this example but instead of writing the JavaScript to create those web elements I'm gonna create them from the data uh, so first we're gonna create the data points for them uh, so the first circle uh, the radius be gonna be 20 the color is gonna be red and then for the second circle the radius is 20, the color is blue. Uh, we will need a little string around here. And then for the third circle, radius 20, color is green, RGB circles. So that's it for our data set, let's save it. And then uh, we're gonna go to the JavaScript and created in a circle. Uh, one of the uh, interesting features on the uh, video.io is uh, once you specify the data in the data uh, sheet here, um, you can see it in the grid as well. Um, the data is going to be passed into this function. So we don't have to uh, declare the data in the JavaScript uh, and we can declare it in the data tab and then write the JavaScript in here. So it, it makes the code much cleaner, so you don't see the data. Uh, you only see the JavaScript code. So first, we're going to create the SVG element. Uh, going to do very similar to our other tutorial. Going to select the uh, canvas diff uh, and then append uh, SVG to that canvas diff. Uh, for vita.io, canvas diff is right here. Um, and then we're going to specify the attribute of the SVG as the width. And then specify the height is height. And once we refresh, we can see the border around our canvas. Um, but it's an empty canvas. Uh, the next step is we're going to create the circle. Uh, unlike the other tutorial, uh, where we write a statement to create uh, individual individual circle uh, in this one we're going to use data binding uh, so this is how we're going to do it we're going to select all the circle and then we're going to say data is data so this is the data function uh, and then this is the data points that are passed in so there are two different things next we're going to call enter um, in uh, subsequent tutorial uh, I will explain what enter means, but uh, in this tutorial, for a quick uh, purpose, uh, what enter means is uh, D3 will take all the data points that we passed in, and if there is no visual element for the data, um, it will create the visual element for us. So uh, we have three data points here that are passed into this call, uh, and then once it is enter, uh, it will create the three circles for us. So that's how we are able to create three circles in just one single statement. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna specify the radius of the circles. And uh, here is the code. And uh, what this means is the attribute R will be a result of the function that is executing here. And the parameter D is a data point in the data array. So D will be a data point for each uh, here. So we can see uh, it's going to return R, which is the radius of the circle here. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is fill. Uh, we're going to use the same technique. So each data point return the color of the data point. Right? And then once we refresh, we see a circle. 
where are the other circles? So uh, let's take a look. We do an inspect element. We actually see three circles with RGB, but they're actually sitting on top of each other, so we only see one circle. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, create the center X and center Y, uh, so that the three circles appear here, 90, 90, 180, and 90, 270, and 90 here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to specify the CX attribute, 90, CY is 90, that's the first circle, uh, CX is 180, CY is 90, CX is 270, uh, need a column here, CY is 90. So those are the three coordinates. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is repeating the same thing. We want to specify the CX attribute and CY attribute for these circles. So we're going to apply a very similar technique, CX, and then function D, and then return D.CX. And then CY, function D, return D.CY. Okay? And then refresh. Ah, voila, we see three circles now. And if you uh, do inspect element, you'll be able to see them uh, right here. So that's how D3 is magically bind all the data points that we specify in the data tab here uh, into the visual element and create them. So the magic here is the enter function. It will look at the data, and if there's no visual element for the data, it will append the circle to the SVG. And then for each of the ad of circle, uh, we are able to extract the attributes uh, by using this function. It will loop through the data point um, and return the attribute for us. So it's in a very a similar way to a loop, but we don't actually write a loop uh, and still able to achieve the same similar functionality. So it's a very concise way to and declarative way to understand the data and the visual elements. So that's it for uh, data binding. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time.